So, um, what is kind of the main idea of this assessment? You're, what are you showing me? Um, we're writing about maybe the correlation or a lack of correlation between some data that you and I collected on. Okay, so if we had to summarize that in just kind of one topic, one sentence of something that you are going to do, and then you are going to use correlation to do that, what would you say? Well, I would say again, that's what you are going to do, but as an overarching just title, what, what, again, that's something you're going to do. You've sort of said it with the word correlation. Extrapolation is something that you may choose or choose not to do. But what is, in general, are we trying to do when we do statistics? Okay, yeah. So what we're looking to do is discover any um, relationship between two variables, right? That's kind of what you're looking to do. And you are going to analyze... Oops, going to analyze that relationship. So that's basically what it's about. And when you have discovered and analyzed, what would you then look to do to finish things? Why bother analyzing a relationship? Okay. Well, I would say for us, probably not a bit, maybe a bit more. Yeah, we want to um, be able to make predictions based on the relationship. All right. That's what we want to be able to do. Because that's the thing with, um, it's kind of, we're doing a, what's called a statistical model. So we are trying to look at um, the relationship between two variables so that we can kind of say, well, assuming this relationship carries on in the way it has done up to this point, can we predict what's going to happen next? Okay. And why might we want to do that? You can give me an, a reason with an example if it helps. Probably will. Yeah, I'd go with grades is quite a good one, actually. But why might I want a statistical model? What, what's, why might I want to make predictions? What's the reason for it, do you think? What do you think? I was just going to give an example. Well, where I can, I think we've got it, but why would I want to, I guess? So this is what your assessment should be like. Yeah, I'd go with that. So you know there's something that you want to achieve and therefore you're going to work out based on lots of relevant data well, if, if, if I can work out approximately how much I need to study and that will get me a certain grade, then you'd go for it, wouldn't you? Greg? So, <clears throat> say you develop a highly effective growth hormone that increases your height by however many uh, pills you take, one pill per age, of course. Um, and you look at basketball statistics um, and you find the average points per game based on the average player's height. That's false. What? That you can't. You know, and I'm saying if there is a right. So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick Nick up on that in a sec. But you carry on. Um, assuming there is a relationship. Yeah. And then. Uh, no. Yeah, mine doesn't work. I was gonna <laughs> say maybe you could predict how many points you get based on how many pills you take. I don't know. Just hypothetical. Yeah. I would need more. Um. Well, not exactly. We need more, but more punishment. Unethical. Yeah. So. Well, what I'm going to do, my is I'm going to see how many minutes, like, 
And maybe I want to just seem smart to my friends. I'm bragging here. Like, I want to, I want to, like, find a correlation between how many man's played in the playoffs and the points scored. Like, see if there's a direct relationship. But why would I want to do that? It's like, like you can, and it's a perfectly good thing to study, but to why would I want to? To know if you're like an average. Or if you're, like, a coach, uh, see if... If like you should play your best players, your most efficient players, more minutes in the playoffs, and see if they'll score more points. Okay, so yeah, you could be talking about uh, there's situation where you say, "Am I at the point? Is my team at the point they need to be at?" So I do an analysis and say, Ru "Really, based on all the data, they ought to be at this point, and they're either above or below. And if they're below, that would really say to me, I need to do that." Um, so I could do an analysis, for instance, of how far a football player runs in a game, you know, distance with minutes. And if I can see that a player is not running as far as they normally do at that time, what would, I could make conclusions. You know, I could go, well, maybe they're tired, maybe they're injured, maybe, you know. So I can look at a set of data and say, you know, so... but. That, by the way, is the difference between, Nick, just doing something because you've been asked to, to analyse a relationship, but thinking about what is your reason for it, all right? Okay, so hopefully you would have a reason for doing this model. You'd come up with that, and that's something you can state at the beginning of your work, all right? I actually have a good, I actually have a good one. So like if I'm the basketball coach, I can see my put my players player efficiency rating, and I can see uh, how many points per game they're scoring. So I can see if player efficiency rating has a direct correlation with points per game. Yeah, you could look at the type of training you're doing and see how it's affecting your you know the results and things, and they would do that, wouldn't they? Yeah. You know, and you'd look on it and because every player is slightly different, but you could look at a trend. You know, um, okay. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a, a relationship between two variables. We want to analyze that relationship. Um, we want to be able to make predictions uh, based on that relationship. So we're creating what's called a model, a mathematical model. In this case, it's a mathematical model based on statistics rather than just a, a function or a formula from, you know, from an exact relationship. Um, hopefully, you will come up with those two variables that you want to analyze and a reason for it. What, what is it you want to do? Why would you want to make those predictions? You know, not just come up with it and then after the fact, try and think, how could I use that? So that could be the beginning of your piece of work. All right. So what are the things um, that you would have to put in your work? So you, I think you've already said data collection needs to be there. Mm -hmm. All right? So you need some way of collecting your data. Bearing in mind it's a criterion D assessment, what sort of stuff could I consider talking about when I do data collection if I want a good mark? Pardon? Yeah, but I would say all of this could be something is real life. You are going to collect data of some sort from a real life situation, aren't you? Uh, we can't really do this about something that's not real life, I mean, unless you make up the data. Um, but there are certain things, you know, we've talked about in Criterion D that maybe I can't address in a test that you need to discuss to get to the higher levels. Well, have you got previous documents with you, or there's certain words? Say so, what? Let me. Okay, so if we have a look at this criterion D, look at the four through eight, and what are the words we're kind of picking up on to get the top end. You're all looking really at. Let's forget the four. The justify, yeah. Degree of accuracy. Explain. 
explaining. So if we look at those sort of things, we are really looking at explain the degree of accuracy, explain whether the solution makes sense, justify it and justify whether. So at the point of your um, data collection, what could you do at that point? You can definitely justify something there, can't you? Is your data reliable? Okay. And how could you talk about that? What do I mean by is it reliable? Like if you have one, if you have one, like X, you can use it if you want. Can you base things off of it? Not even that, before that stage. Is like, there a direct correlation? Oh, no, no, even no, before. So the person measuring someone's height is a ruler fault. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I'm after, is the data reliable? Not, but this is before you've done any mathematics. Is the data reliable? Can I use it to do my analysis and do my maths? Yeah, like you can't, like, say, I'm going to go back to the, like, NBA, but you can't, you can't use the height of football players in a hub. Relevance yeah. as well, yeah? yeah. Uh, so we can also put relevant data. Is it relevant? Is it reliable? So reliability would be where does it come from? How did you get it? So yeah, if I find my data from a website, can you verify that that website is reliable? Do you, have you talked about that within your That's good. computer that stuff? Like, that was like the official website. It's updated like after everything. Yeah. yeah. But do you know how you can verify your data? Secondary sources. So there you go. You've got secondary sources. You know, if you've got two sources of information that both confirm the same information, then you, you can say, I've got reliable data. OK? This is actually really important for maths IAs and things you know when you start doing stuff at university you've got to be able to verify and actually the um your personal projects and things next year you've got to find sources of information from a range of uh sources and you've got to know whether they're uh you know quality sources or not can you verify it from a different place do they have the information is it from a reliable source like is it an official mba one or is it someone that says they're collecting the data from an official source? Yeah? Is it just some guy that happens to watch every game because he's got nothing else to do and records it on his own site? Uh, you know, he doesn't like the Lakers, so he just records them a bit differently. You know, that's kind of so if, depends what what you're doing. So this is where you can start talking about that for your criterion D stuff. Is it relevant? Should be. That's normally an easy one. Is the data reliable? All right. Have you got enough data? Why should I worry about have you got enough data? Because uh, the higher the sample size, the more accurate the prediction is. Exactly. Yeah. The more data you've got, the better your prediction is going to be. All right. Now, we haven't actually talked about sampling and how to do sampling. So I'm not going to worry about that at this stage. Yeah. There are different methods of selecting data. So let's say you've got 10,000 results on a website and you only want 100 of them. How would you go about choosing those 100 is something we would look at in the future. Yeah? That's only one. So there are different sampling techniques, like random sampling. You go through and pick a random one yourself. How random is that? Because you're always affected by something. You can number them all and then use your calculator to produce a random number and, and go through. There's lots of ways to do it, but we won't worry about it at this stage. We'll just say, have you got enough? You should know that. If you collect only five bits of information and try and do a scatter plot and a line of best fit from that, you've not got enough data. All right? You don't need a thousand pieces of data, All right? But that's how we can start talking about reliability. Another one to look at is, remember we taught causation? Okay. Oh, yeah. So, like, Greg. So, like, just because x equals y doesn't mean that x causes y. 
I, yeah, I'll go. Just because one thing looks, it reacts in the same way as another thing, yeah? So the number of, um, I don't know, what did we say? Number of fish in the sea rises or drops with temperature, right? And there's a direct correlation maybe between those two. But is it the temperature or is it the temperature change of the water specifically or, you know, that kind of look at what... So you've got to look at... It, are the two variables that you are actually considering, are they directly affecting each other? Yeah. Does one affect the other? Why is not? Well, then you need to discuss that and whether you've picked the right stuff. You know, you're going to look at the relationship between two things. You want to kind of pick something that genuinely one does affect the other. Even if you haven't picked the right stuff, you're still going to do it. As long as you discuss it, yeah, okay. as long as you say... Having done this, you know, I've got this correlation. It looks like an amazing relationship, you know, perfectly linear, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, thinking about it, there is this other thing in the middle that probably is directly, okay? Um, so we've got causation. Uh, does one thing directly affect the other? We're talking about. Uh, don't forget, uh, what is the independent variable? Well, the, what, the thing that probably affects the other one changing. Remember, some, the, some can be argued either way, some not, you know? Um, if I want to sell more ice creams, I can't just up the temperature. Yeah. Yeah. If the temperature rises, I will sell more ice cream. But I can't do it the other way. If I sell more ice cream, the temperature will go up. Makes no sense. All right? Because if we wanted a better summer, someone just needs to go out and sell something. No, it doesn't work. All right? Okay. So we've got those things to consider. Now, what? Um, how do we do the analysis? So we need to produce a... Scatter plot. You need to do a line of best fit. What needs to be included in a line of best fit? The mean point. We must have the mean point. Okay. Can be done with technology is fine. If you want to put it into a computer program, put it into your calculator, it works out the equation. That's probably better than just drawing one by hand. As long as, you know, you, I have no qualms at all with you doing this stuff on your calculator or computer. As long as you've got the data, you've put it in. So what we're really looking for is what you talk about. Okay. I don't expect you to do a linear regression calculation by hand. You know, you, if you know how to use the technology, which I hope you do, you know, you go onto Desmos or your computer or Excel or whatever, but I want to see the equation, I want to see it written down, and then I want you to use that equation, yeah? So you're going to use the equation to make predictions. Slow down a bit. Use the equation to make predictions. Now, at this point, if you're going to make equations, again, let's refer back. I guess it's this one. What out of the criteria can we look at when we're making a prediction? Definitely, yeah. We've got all of that. Think about the hard things to get. Justify whether the solution makes sense, definitely. If you're going to make a prediction, does that make sense to the situation in the real life? Yeah? yeah. So, like, I'm just saying, you know, in the basketball thing, hypothetically, if, if it does show out that the power of the average NBA player, the more points it is, it's not feasible to have an 18 foot person. You know? Exactly, yeah. You know, you've got to talk, I'll make a prediction, um, and you can justify whether that prediction makes sense. 
All right, remember we talked about limits and things. Um, you can justify the degree of accuracy, for instance. So if you take one, your independent variable and you work out your, your dependent variable, what accuracy should you be working to? All right, how good is that prediction based on the data you've got? So going back to that, how can we discuss whether the prediction is any good? Is the prediction reliable? And what would you look at? Yeah. Um, scatter plot, like how it applies to the context of the situation, uh, and the reliability of the data collection. Yeah, so we've got the reliability of the data, but remember what I said when we've got a line of best fit, we want to use it to make predictions. We use that equation. How reliable is that equation? It depends on one thing a, a big time. Whether it's interpolation or extrapolation. Okay, so we've got that. Have you done extrapolation? Or, sorry, interpolation. But there's also something else. Which is... What is the correlation like? So how do we describe this correlation? You tell me what the things. It's strong, linear or non-linear? Negative or positive, yeah? So we're talking about adding those things in. Those are the things that we can do, all right? Well, what I would say is this, this thing I've got written down here, limitations, because if you've got positive re relationship, positive correlation, theoretically, couldn't both variables go up forever? But if you've got a negative, won't one get to zero? But then would your prediction be more reliable? Depends. Is it possible for something to get to zero? It depends entirely on what we're doing. Yeah. Is it possible to have a variable in negatives? Yeah. Like temperature. temperature. You know? Yeah, it's like, in some ways, it's paradoxical. Because, oh. like, uh, I'm lost now. For, <laughs> for, like, one variable to get to zero, because you know, next to the NBA players, um, uh, metaphor. So you can't have, you can't be paid zero dollars by an NBA. Can team, college still athletes? Be an NBA. <laughs> no, true. Yeah. A, uh, you also can't have a um, an NBA player who is a college athlete. Or I was thinking about height. What's the minimum height? Yeah, you can't have NBA players I mean, zero uh, feet tall. Yeah, and probably not even one foot tall or two foot tall. You know. Um, so where is the limitation Probably of that? Like you know, five, five so you've got to consider that. Yeah. Um, see, there you go. There's no limitations on what you can do. So stop complaining and say, you know, you could be an NBA All Star before you knew it. It's got nothing to do with height. It's to do with uh, effort. So you've got limitations. Again, you've talked about extrapolation and interpolation. I'm looking for some kind of discussion. Uh, what, yeah. Um, you to state whether your conclusions, whether your predictions are reliable or not. You need to justify and verify and so on. OK. Um, could you verify your prediction? Can you verify a prediction? No? Well, not, not until... Unless you had a separate set of... You can verify how you can say you got it, but you can't verify... Well, verification is about whether you got it. I think what you're talking about, I can justify it, which is what you're saying. So you can't verify a prediction. 
Anyone disagree with that? I think you can. I mean, if you choose a like the correlation that is like to you, for example, height and something else, yeah. height and weight, then you can like figure out you know that six and use your height on your weight or the yeah. other thing and then you can check. So we can actually we could Exactly that. If you've taken everyone's information about height and weight and you've plotted it and you've done a line and you say, right, I am going to use this to predict my weight from my height, you know, oh, yes. um, now you, you, the, the, I can understand what's difficult to get from that is you're thinking, well, that's not prediction. But it kind of is because you haven't measured your weight yet. So you can use your model to see whether it could predict your weight. All right. But you can't like verify that prediction is correct. Yeah, you can. Well, you can. You can't. Just after you can predict, you have a knowledge in the time frame of this test. Yes, you can. If Tebow does uh, height against weight and he puts in his height and works out he's seventy six kilos, okay, then he goes and stands on the scales and works out he's actually fifty five kilos. I would say that's proving my model is a bit inaccurate. Yeah, yeah it's wrong. Yeah, so I've, uh, you know, if he gets his 75 kilos instead of 76, have we verified the model? Yeah. yeah, if we're close enough. So we would say how close is close enough is something for you to consider. Like if you make a prediction and you try and verify it and you don't get spot on, but how close do you need to be? Are you within the tolerance? You know? Yeah, it depends what you're doing, doesn't it? You know, if I'm trying to predict someone's weight and I'm only half a kilo out, I'm probably okay with that. That's, that's fine. You know, if I'm 10 kilos out, someone might get a bit annoyed at me, you know? Yes, but they agree you How can I talk about, like, how can I talk about verifying a prediction if it was, like, something about, like, average points per game in the NBA? I have zero points. Well, compared to height. But it doesn't, well, you remember what we did. Else, remember what Tebow did. He had one piece of information that he knew. Yes. And he left it out. And he used a lot of other stuff. So you could take all your information and leave one data point out. Oh, yeah. Potentially. And just pre for this activity, we could do something like that. If I was actually going to do it, what I would do is I'm going to use 2018 data. I'm going to predict and say, right, I'm going to predict what will happen in a game in 2019. And then you go to that game in 2019 and find the score and see whether it matches to your what your prediction says it would have been. Yeah. I can look at 2018's rainfall over the, the, the months and go, right, I'm going to use that to predict the rainfall on March the 8th, 2019. And I wait till March the 8th, and I actually record it, and then I go, how good was it? Yeah, okay. So there are ways that you can do it. What if it doesn't rain? Then yeah. that's, that's a measurement. Yeah. It's yeah. zero. Yeah? Yeah. If my prediction is that I'm going to have five foot of rain on March the 8th, and it doesn't rain at all, my prediction was way off. I wouldn't do rain. Then you, yeah, it's how but then you start, but this is the thing with statistics, then you start talking about how wrong is that? How good is a weather model? And is anyone's weather model very good? Well, it, it, it the closest you get to the present, yeah. the more accurate it is. I think they can predict using radars a, a day or two down the line, but as you start getting further away, it and that's... Difficult, difficult, difficult. Yeah. I've always wondered like, how, how they, like, how you can measure, like, how much rainfall like when somebody says five feet, like you can't just have like a bucket. That's what you did. But then the width is like taking away from it. You know what I mean? I would assume it's standard. I would think you have like a, a like a cylinder of maybe like. Does it, have to, be, it have to be the exact yes, same Yes, but don't diameter. fit. No, because it doesn't matter. Because rain doesn't fall in patches. Oh yeah. Right. The rain. You assume the rain falls like a blanket. Yeah. So don't even imagine it's droplets. Imagine that all the rain is condensed into a block that is two inches thick, right? Uh, if that were to all come down over the entire of Bermuda, if you put a little cup uh, that's that wide but that tall, you'd get two inches. If it was a massive swimming pool, 
empty, flat bottom, it would still have two inches. Two inch. yeah, it would only be yeah. flat if you measured the bottom. Oh, yeah. 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 I never thought of it. Yeah, I, I always thought about that. My, my grandfather would always be like, oh, it's snowed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what I'm looking for then, all right? This doesn't have to be super, super long by any means, because you're only doing a scatter plot and a line of best fit, which you can do on technology. I am really looking for what you say about it. That's what this is all about, this statistics stuff, yeah? The math is kind of useful, but only if you use it for some reason. So when we do this, so you notice it's a criterion C and D, all right? So C, obviously, let's have a quick look. So the criterion C, what am I looking for? Consistently use appropriate mathematical language. So what's the vocabulary we should be using? Oh, I Extrapolation, interpolation, uh, correlation, linear, linear, nonlinear, causality, um, mean prediction, prediction, Analyze, mean point, yeah, synthesize. I've never seen it. Variables, independent, dependent variables. Degree of accuracy, degree of accuracy, justify, verify. You're using those words. Not, I am looking at two things to see whether they affect each other. You know, you're actually saying, I'm comparing two variables to see if there is a correlation. Yes, okay. Um, are we no, it's not formative. Um, how would I describe, like, I don't know how to explain this, but I thought it was beautiful, right? And it was about NBA. And how would I say it as you increase in height, the range varies? Because, like, for a center, for example, there's only so many people who are above seven feet. So there's a higher chance of being, like, really good people and really bad people just because they got on the team because they're tall. Yeah than there is for a point guard which is the shortest average position because there's more people. But then you're, then you're discussing what kind of relationship you're actually looking for. Is it right to look for a relationship between two variables where there's a big change in effect of one of the variables? Because like you say, if I look at um, heights of people and how many goals they score in football, mm -hmm. maybe more football, that's even worse because like footballers, defenders, don't very often go up. And they're big and tall, yeah. right? And strikers, they're always they're, they're there to score the goals, and that's what they train for, and they might not be as tall. You know, so to, to clump them all into one thing, I should go, well, I'm just going to look at strikers, yeah. and I'm going to compare the heights of all the different strikers. And then I have got small strikers, and I've got tall strikers, and I should look at them. But then I've got, which team do they play for? Yeah. How much money, you know? So I've got so much to consider when I'm doing these. So that's where you start discussing your limitations and things of this. Okay. Um, right, so we've also got use appropriate forms of mathematical representation. Scanner plots. A scanner plot. Maybe you're in grass. We're basically just doing a scanner plot, yeah, aren't we? Okay, we've got a scatter plot though, but we have got tables, stable table maybe. You can include STEM in it. I will not penalise you. I might even give you credit if you can get things like STEM. Only if it's relevant and only if it's useful for the project. I don't want irrelevant stuff that's filler. <laughs> Great, do it. If it applies to your work, do it. I'd love it. If you can apply the STEM and leaf and the box and whisker, but if it's not relevant, you will actually lose marks for Criterion C. But we do have scatter plots. Scatter plots should be titled and labeled, axis labeled, scales done appropriately, your line should be done appropriately, your equation of the line of best fit should be done, written correctly, appropriate degrees of accuracy used. So, 
seems like pretty much it doesn't matter what data we choose. If it's bad, it just matters that we talk about how bad it is. Perfect. Great comment. I can't get through that enough. All right? If your data does not show a relationship, that's fine. It's what you say, and then the discussion about why it doesn't, how you can see that, blah, blah, blah. That's perfectly good. But then if there is no correlation in your data, you can't make any predictions. Yes, but you can... Make a prediction that you can Yeah, you can state that a prediction would not be reliable. You could prove that by trying to make a prediction and then verifying that it's wrong. So you can still get all that in. Um, move effectively between different forms of mathematical pre um, representation. So I would be expecting to see written stuff in this one. Your graphs, your tables, but you should be referring to your graph. You know, if you're doing extrapolation, show that the point on it. How do you label that? How do you do that communication? How do you make it clear that you are talking about that point on your graph? How do you show that you use that equation to give you that prediction and so on? So that's what we're looking for. Rather than block one after the other, we ought to have some sort of flow into it. Right? And again, lines of reasoning that are complete and coherent and concise. That's a very important one. Right? Concise. Yeah, I always, there's certain comments that my teachers made to me at school, and one of them was made when I was like, probably only about nine, and I did this um, project, and my teacher said, really good, brilliant, I bet you just sat down at your computer and did it. But how do you know that? Well, because it, it reads like someone that didn't have to write it first. Because when you type into a computer, it's so easy just to delete, cut and paste, blah, blah, rearrange. If you handwrite something, you have to think about it. Because if you make a mistake, you've got to rewrite it all. So you think very carefully, and you don't want to write too much because you handle that. Computer, type, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll just add that. Yeah, waffle, yeah, a bit more of that. It becomes, it lacks conciseness, it becomes waffly, it, it loses coherency, yeah? You cut and paste and you move. It might make sense in your head, but you don't bother to read it, and suddenly it makes no sense. So be careful that you don't just sit down with your computer and start typing. All right? And then present work that is consistently organized and using a logical structure. It should have beginning, middle, and end. What's the beginning? Exactly. What are the variables and what are you doing it for? You could even think about, well, make, a, like I said, a hypothesis, make a kind of what do I think is going to happen? You know, I would like to, to verify my ideas. I think that, you know, start it on that way. The middle, do the analysis, right? The end, predict, verify your prediction, explain whether they, what was good and bad about it. That's it, all right? Forget the waffle, we don't need lots of waffly stuff. Cut it right back. Yes. Yes. All right, and I'll put these notes on manage right when I put it as well. So final thing just to discuss in the last two minutes is, should we do two weeks? No. All right? Now the other thing I'm gonna need though, I think we also need to do some form of Short criteria A assessment. That's three weeks. Yeah, I think we've got four weeks left. Wait, wait, wait. Including this week. Wait, when does the lunch? Well, hey. This week. Including this, we've got yeah. four. Wait, Mr. Fox, Mr. Fox, what, 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 what,